Hey guys, it's David from Juki Junkies, home to Juki's Fabric Shop. And in today's video, we're gonna go over the options available for the Juki 1541S as far as the motors go. There's the digital server motor and the manual server motor. So let's go over how to use them and what are the differences between the two. So let's start off with the standard motor that comes with the Juki 1541. The manual servo motor is 550 watts. It's a very reliable, strong motor. It comes on all 1541s as the standard option. And we'll start off with the switch, what powers it on and off. So as you can see, we have an on-off switch, so it's off. Now it's on with a small little LED light indicating when it's on and when it's off, which is really, really nice. And also with this motor, it does have a plug in the back of it where the LED light plugs in. And if you have your LED light switch turned on, which is right here, and you plug it into the back of the motor, you know whenever the motor's on, the light is gonna indicate that it's on. So that is really nice, as industrials don't really have any indication when the machine's actually on because, you know, it doesn't have any screens, it doesn't have any lights built into the machine itself. So now let's look at the motor itself. When we go down here, you're gonna see the manual dial where you can switch it from zero RPMs all the way up to 3450 RPMs, and we have it at 350 to kind of show you its speed. So with the standard motor, when you're sewing, your needle will end either up or down. There's no actual position that it can end. You'll have to kind of rotate that hand wheel each time if you want to finish with it down and then pick up your foot and rotate your material. Now I'm sewing some more, and now I have to rotate it down again. So you actually have to control where your needle ends on this standard, standard motor. There is no needle positioner on this one. But let's go ahead and show you the 350 RPMs and what it feels like and the speed you should expect from this motor at its lowest setting. So this is pushed down all the way at 350. And then we're going to actually feather it as slow as we can to kind of show you how slow we'll get it. So that's about where I can get it. I might be able to get it a little bit slower if I feather it just right. So right about there. Now let's show you the motor turned up all the way so you can see what kind of speeds to expect when you have this motor all the way up. Extremely fast. I don't think anybody would ever sew at that speed, but who knows, I'm sure somebody out there does. So now that we've kind of gone over the standard motor, let's go ahead and switch over to the needle positioner. So now we are on the needle positioner motor, AKA the digital servo motor. And we're gonna start off with the buttons like we did on the other machine. The on off button is located right here. Off is red, on is green of course. Very nice, very digital, very audible switches between the buttons. This motor is 650 watts which means it's got a little bit more power than the standard servo motor, which you can take that for what it's worth, but honestly, you probably don't need any more power as that one has plenty of power for what the machine is capable of doing. That's just something to note. Let's go ahead and look at the motor and the, see the physical differences. So as you can see here, we have the actual motor located over here, and then this is kind of the controller box. Since this is a digital motor, it has some controls and some functions we can we can choose to do on this machine. So as you can see, there is the digital screen right here. And you can see over here where there's that little enter button, which is this one. You can see where the little red light is indicated, which means my needle is going to be ending in the down position. So every time I sew, I hit that gas pedal. Watch this. When I let go of that pedal, it always ends down. So I don't have to physically rotate my hand wheel. It will always end down. Now, if I want it to always end with the needle up, I can just press this button right here and move that little LED light to the top, showing that it's gonna indicate always up. Now, when I press the gas pedal, always ends up. So that is a really nice function the needle positioner has to offer. Now, what else does it have to offer? Is the speeds the same? Well, the digital servo motor actually has a slower rotations per minute that you can run this machine. So we can put it down to 200 RPMs per minute. And I will drop in the description of this video 
a PDF file with the manual and how to go through all the functions on this motor. You'll see that there's tons of different functions on this motor, but you really only want to use the two functions, which is the position of your needle, which is going to be tapping this up or down, indicating where that red light is and where your needle is going to end, and then this button, which you just tap it or hold it down for a second and then it pops up all these options. So it says P6, uh, and I know it's kind of hard on the phone. It, it captures the screen weird and it's flashing, but it doesn't flash in real life. It looks normal. So I'm going to go through these options and all these numbers and options you can ignore. Only one that matters, matters to us is P1. So once I get to P1, which it's at right now, press enter, and then I can tap this manual button to shift through all the numbers. So it goes from two to 80 as my stitches or my RPMs on this machine. So I wanted to bring it down to the slowest RPM, so I'm gonna hold this down. When you hold it down, it'll shift through the settings quicker. I'm just gonna hold it down and get to number two. So once I get it to two, then I can press this little enter button, hold it down for two seconds. And you'll hear it make like a little click. And then you can see this little red thing rotating, which means it's ready to sew. And I have my needle in the down position, so it always ends down. We'll keep it there. And we'll show you how slow we can get this machine to sew at 200 RPMs, which is to the lowest setting on this motor. So I'm gonna hold down the gas pedal all the way. And you can see it is definitely a little bit slower than the manual motor. Um, and now I'm going to feather the pedal and show you how slow I can get it to sew out. And I can actually just tap the pedal, so just like that, and I can get to do a single stitch at a time. So this is really nice for the person that wants to sew. Extremely sew, get to that edge, lift up their foot, rotate their material, single stitch at a time, get to the edge, rotate. So you can really single stitch this machine out or you can hold it down at 200 and it's still a very nice uh, manageable speed. So now let's show you the faster speed real quick and we should be able to conclude this comparison. Okay, so now I have the motor turned all the way up to 80 and we're gonna go ahead and hit that pedal all the way down and show you how fast this machine can go. So as you can see, it's faster than you're ever gonna wanna go. You'll probably never have it at 80, but I figured I'd show you kind of what it's capable of. So there we have it. We now know the differences between the standard servo motor and the digital servo motor and the two options you have with the 1541. For a quick summary, the standard servo motor is great for the person that doesn't care so much about the position of their needle or, you know, the extra few hundred dollars is not worth it to them and they'd rather just manually rotate that hand wheel. The digital servo motor is for the person that wants to go a little bit slower, in my opinion, and you can actually really feather that pedal and do one stitch at a time, which is really, really nice. And the person that has that extra few hundred dollars to justify those extra little bonuses with that motor and somebody who wants to control the position of their needle when it's done sewing. One other thing I forgot to mention, if you look at the hand wheel on both machines, the needle positioner motor, which is this one, will have a little synchronizer on the side of the hand wheel. This is what tells the motor and communicates to the motor in what position the needle is in. That is synchronized by the factory, and when we ship these out, you'll actually already have that synchronizer on the side of your hand wheel so that you don't have to do that at home, which is really, really nice. As you can see, the manual one doesn't have that because it doesn't have a needle positioner. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave this video a like. Comment down below any questions you may have as we are happy to help you guys out. And of course, hit that subscribe button because we post every Sunday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, don't forget to shop jukijunkies.com if you're ready to buy any of these machines. Or if you have any questions, hit us up on email at sewingmachines411 at gmail.com and we can help get you one of these motors ordered for your machine if you already have one. So thank you so much and I hope you guys have a great day.